y'all. Welcome to Miss Clark's chemistry class. In this lesson, I want to work some quantum number practice problems. Again, if you're from my class, I am looking at our practice sheet from our packet. If you're not from my class and you're needing some help on understanding how to apply quantum numbers, I bet this will help you. Grab something to write with. You're probably not going to need your periodic table. You might need notes. If you're in my class, grab your packet. Let's get started. Okay, so quantum numbers are related to the quantum mechanical model, the most modern model of the atom. Now we used to draw Bohr's diagrams where we've got two electrons on the first energy level, eight on the second, so on and so forth. Bohr models, we show where the electrons are. Except for we're learning that there's more to it. And so the quantum mechanical model gives a more clear picture, but it's a model. It's showing you where all the electrons are. But to understand the model and to understand how to locate specific electrons, you need to understand quantum numbers. Remember, quantum numbers are a four-digit address to the location of one electron. That's Pauli exclusion's principle, y'all. Each electron is going to have its own four-digit address. No two electrons can be in the same place at the same time. Pauli exclusion. Okay, so the four digits, the first digit, remember that's letter N, that's the principle. That's going to tell us the energy level. And then we have the angular quantum number. That's the second quantum number. This is going to tell us the sublevel. If you know the sublevel, you know the shapes of the orbitals. You know, that's that sphere, dumbbell, four leaf clover complex. We also talked about the magnetic quantum number. This was the orbitals or the orientations. I like to say orbitals. A lot of textbooks, though, remember, are going to say orientation. How these orbitals orient around the X, Y, Z axis. And then we have the last quantum number, the fourth one, and that's going to be the spin. Remember, they're either going to have a positive spin or they're going to have a negative spin. The number that represents energy level is going to be a positive integer, and I normally say it's going to be 1 through 7. And then each energy level is going to have a different amount of sublevels. So there's a formula so you can always relate energy levels to sublevels. And so L is always a range of numbers because energy levels might have multiple sublevels. So we're going to have a range of numbers, starting with 0, going 2, n minus 1. That's how we're going to take into account that energy level. If we're trying to figure out which orbital would solve for m sub l, and that is going to be, again, a range of numbers because sublevels have multiple orbitals, and that's going to be from negative l to positive l. Now, if you need more information on that, you need to start over at the first lesson. I'm going to link that above. But I'm going to use these formulas a few times, and I just wanted you to remember where I was getting them from. Okay, I'm going to jump right into some practice and stop reviewing. Let's say we're talking about sublevel 4D. Remember, D has five orbitals. If we wanted to list the quantum numbers for each orbital, let's see what that would look like. Okay, so we're going to list the quantum numbers for each orbital. So I am going to want the N value, the L value, and the M sub L value because orbitals are related to the M sub L. Okay, so remember N is the energy level. And since we have this four here in front, we know we're talking about the fourth energy level. Now, the D sublevel, each sublevel has a code. Okay, that's what that formula is gonna give you. It's code, it's label. So when L equals zero, that means S. When L equals one, that means P. When L equals two, that means D. And when L equals three, that means F. So here, we're talking about sublevel D. D codes for two. So the second number is going to be a two. Now there are five orbitals in D, and they each need their own marker, their own label, their own code. That's where this formula comes into play. M sub L equals negative L to positive L. Well, we just said L, because that's the second quantum number, is two. So that means our possible values are negative two, negative one, zero, positive one, positive two. So if we wanna start with this first orbital, that would be the next quantum number, negative two. Principal quantum number is four, fourth energy level. The angular quantum number is two, because we're talking about sublevel D. And then the very first orbital would be negative two. Now, if we were going to put the quantum numbers for the next orbital, because it has five orbitals, so we need five sets of quantum numbers, 
The thing is though, we're still talking about the fourth energy level. We're still talking about D sub level. We're just talking about the new orbital. So the energy level and sub level numbers stay the same. So if we wanted to get the next set of quantum numbers, we would just have four, two, zero, and so on and so forth. Are we seeing what to do here? Do I need to finish this on out? So the next one, the last number is gonna be the plus one, and then the very last one, the fifth orbital, is gonna end with plus two. So each orbital in the 5D sublevel has its own code. And basically that's what these numbers are. It's just like a code. Again, I'm just gonna keep going through problems, but it's gonna be approaching these quantum numbers in different ways. I'm gonna give you a quantum number or a designation, and we're gonna figure out how many orbitals. So if we're looking at 3P, how many orbitals in 3P? Well, the thing we need to focus on is P. P has three orbitals. So in the 3P sublevel, energy level three, the P sublevel, we could have three orbitals because P has three orbitals. So what about 4P? Well, again, it's a P. P means three orbitals. These orbitals just happen to be on the fourth energy level. The number of orbitals stay consistent with the sublevel no matter what energy level it is in. But what if I showed you a designation like this? Now, I'm going to be honest. I didn't really talk about this in my class. This little designation here. Well, remember we talked about orientations or orbitals, and they can be on the X, Y, Z axis. So this is the P orbital that's on the X axis. Since it's just the X axis, that's just one orientation. So that is just one orbital. So if we see that X, Y, Z little subscript, that is describing a single orbital's orientation. Let's look at another example. What if we had 6D? Again, D has five orbitals, always D, no matter what energy level D is in. Let's look at a little bit of a different scenario. Instead of me giving you a sublevel, let me give you an energy level, five. Energy level five has how many orbitals? I would really like for you to pause and think about this for a second. Okay, did you pause? Let's think about what is in energy level five. Well, energy level five has four sublevels, S, P, D, and F. Energy level one has one sublevel, energy level two has two sublevels, three has three, four has four. And at ground state, when electrons are just doing it to a regular old thing with a regular amount of energy, that's as many sublevels as we're gonna have, S, P, D, and F. And so energy level five definitely has all four of those, S, P, D, and F where S has one orbital, P has three orbitals, D has five orbitals, F has seven orbitals, and so energy level five would have 16 orbitals. What if I ask you, if N equals five, what are the possible values for L? Remember the formula for L is, it's a range of numbers starting at zero, and it's going all the way to N minus one. N is five. So five minus one is four. So we could have zero, one, two, three, four. Now we have only learned S, P, D, and F. That's at ground state when electrons are doing their regular O thing, they have their regular amount of energy. But if we add energy to atoms, the electrons can jump energy levels. And if electrons are jumping to higher energy levels, there's also higher sublevels. So four is a possibility, even though we don't really talk about it. Okay, so what if we think about the same kind of question, but this time I'm gonna give you L equals three and ask you what the possible values for M of L could be. So remember M sub L is negative L to positive L. So that's where we get negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, plus one, plus two, plus three. Sorry, I got up all in an angle. So we're just applying that formula. And remember, these are codes for all of the different orbitals. When L equals three, that's sublevel F, and F has seven orbitals. And if we were to draw the seven orbitals, I'm gonna use blanks. This first blank would code negative three, that first orbital, which can hold two electrons. The next orbital would be the negative two. So if our electron was here, this would be the code we would use. Okay, so these are just labels. They're codes for a very specific orbital. 
Let's switch it up a tiny bit and think about the maximum number of electrons. Maximum number of electrons. So if we're talking about 3D, what is the maximum number of electrons that can fit in that subshell? Well, D always is going to have 10 electrons. That's the maximum it can hold. So again, same thing as with the orbitals. That number in front is just telling us what energy level it is in. Sublevel, all the Ds are going to hold 10 electrons at most. So if we talked about 4D, still be 10 electrons. But if we were to talk about 2P, P holds 6 electrons. Now what if I were to ask you the maximum number of electrons, but I were to say when N equals 4 and L equals 2. So you would need to know, we're talking about the fourth energy level, but specifically subshell D, right? Because 0 is S, 1 is P, 2 is D. So we just said that, 4D, 10 electrons. But what if we say when N equals 4, L equals 3, and M sub L equals plus 2. Okay, so we know this first number of fourth energy level, 3, that's the F sublevel, right? 3 would be F, F sublevel, so we're at 4 F. But this is the designation for a specific orbital of 4 F. You know, 4 F has seven orbitals, but this codes for just one of those seven orbitals. And remember, in one orbital, we can only hold two electrons. I hope that helps. If you still have questions, please make sure and come see me. Until next time, bye y'all.